Bill Cameron. Hello, Christy. So, truth be told, opening January 13th here right. at Curious Theatre Company, what's it about? Truth be told, it's the tale of two women. Um, it is, there are only two characters, uh, Kathleen and Joe. Kathleen is the mother, Joe is the reporter. And it's about their relationship, but it's also a lot about, about motherhood. They're both mothers uh, of, of one boy. Um, both have issues with, 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 their, with their, their mother and with, with the issue of, the, of their sons. And violence uh, plays an issue in that, of course. And raising boys, I raised a boy myself, raising boys, there is, violence is an issue. Um, uh, fortunately, it wasn't with my son so much, but I see it elsewhere, and I remember seeing it in my family, that it was very, we were f four boys, and we were very contentious and very violent with each other, um, and sometimes, not in my family, but sometimes that violence can reach, can step outside of the family uh, into the community and have devastating results, as we see again and again and again in this country. So it takes on the issue of mass shootings, and what needs to be done about that, but it really doesn't focus on that quite so much. It really focuses on the issue of truth and how we manipulate truth to serve our audience. Uh, your play is getting its world premiere at Curious Theatre Company, yes. uh, but you had the germ of an idea for this play for quite a while. What was has been some of your inspirations to write Truth Be Told? Right, I started working on this play over 10 years ago. I started playing around with it, and there were a number of things that, that influenced me. One, of course, was Sandy Hook, the Sandy Hook shootings, and the response to Sandy Hook from the media, but also from people like Alex Jones and, uh, and others, uh, and I don't want to specifically say it's Alex Jones, but others who sort of stepped into that situation and tried to manipulate the facts for their own purposes, for their own, I don't even sure why, and it infuriated me. It just infuriated me, and it still infuriates me to think about it, that these people had to suffer this unbearable loss, and then on top of that, had to be called out and 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 have, have be told that they were that they were lying about it, that they were that they that it was all a charade. How cruel can can anybody be to, to do something like that? And again, for their own selfish ends. Um, and so that outraged me, and I wanted I wanted to try and find a way to write about it. I had also been 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 reading about. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's mother, who, who desperately, to the end of her life, claimed that her son was not was not uh, guilty for the for the murder of John F. Kennedy, and um, she also she also claimed that he was a, he was a national hero, that he was, that he should be buried next to John F. Kennedy. That was her, that was the thing she said. So I, I thought that was an interesting idea, and I thought about writing about that, um, about about Lee Harvey Oswald's mother, but. I, I sort of came to the understanding or the realization that in my day we had these lone nuts, these people like Lee Harvey Oswald and Arthur Bremer and James Earl Ray and Mark David Chapman and John Hinckley, these assassins who were going out, who, who were sort of expressing their rage towards, towards these political figures and these public figures like John Lennon. And today it seems to me that those same individuals, those, those loners, have a different MO. MO. They're now going out and they're, they're taking their, their uh, automatic weapons into schools and into shopping malls and into warehouses, etc., and opening fire and, and expressing their rage in that way, um, drawing attention to themselves in that way. It's an epidemic. Um, and of course, we're not really doing anything about it. If, uh, if, there, were, if there were a public epi epi epidemic of some disease, you would, I hope you would see um, the government at work trying to resolve it. But we don't seem to be responding that way to the kind of violence epidemic, um, which is which is deeply troubling. Um, again, the play doesn't deal with that quite as much, but still, it's 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 something that troubles me, and it's something that that was in my mind as I was writing the play. And as I was writing the play, there was a lot in the media and a lot in public life of people who were taking the truth and manipulating it again for their own ends. And so the play, I were, when I was writing the play, I, I was angry. I was angry. About and this is not really how I write. This is a, this is sort of a different approach for me. I tend to tell, you know, happy stories about happy people, and um, somehow I just got hooked into this story, and was driven by the idea of, of truth not being told the way that it should be told. So.
you've been in Denver now for a couple of days, I have. and we've been um, working on the play with yes. fabulous actors Karen Slack and Jana mm -hmm. Suzanne Dixon. Uh, sitting at the table, working through the play. What's been the process like so far for you? It's been um, it's been overwhelming, wonderful. So it's just been a joy. Um, I'm retired. I retired. I taught for thirty some years and uh, did theater all during that time. And I haven't done much theater in the past five years. I've done a lot of writing, and um, I've watched a lot of Great British Baking Show with my wife. But I haven't done a lot of, a lot of theater, um, and to get back into the process is joyous enough. But to get that back into the process with such, such talented people, yourself included, is just, it's a joy. It's, it's, it's a dream come true, and I'm just, Pinching myself that I'm getting, that I'm having this experience, and I can't wait to see where the where the production goes from here. Because from what I'm what I'm seeing already, I would pay to see. It's just the actors are brilliant. Karen and Jada are just brilliant, and the way that you're shepherding through the process is just inspiring. I, I can't say enough about how how uh, joyous it truly is. Any surprises at all? Anything you learned about the play in the last couple of days? I have. I have learned a lot about the play in the last couple of days. Um, I think I, I said this last night in rehearsal that I've done a much deeper dive into the character of Kathleen, largely because of the discussions we've had about the set Ooh. and what the set says about her. That it becomes that the room in the, the, the apartment in which she has chosen to live after she has been shunned by the community because of what her son allegedly did. Um, it's a prison and it's a bunker, and the, the work that you've done, that Caitlin has done on the set, has really brought that to life in a way that I didn't, I didn't quite anticipate. Um, I'm really interested in the dynamic that exists between Jada and Karen and how that plays into the relationship between Kathleen and Joe. Oh. It's really been interesting and fun to watch. Clearly, they're, they're good friends. Clearly they know each other and have worked together before, and there's this sort of shorthand between them that's already there. And so as they start working together and sort of bouncing off of one another as the characters in the play, it's really a, it's really a fun thing to watch. It's really an exciting uh, journey to go on with them. Um, they're, they're wonderful. What are some of the things you hope an audience takes away with them after they watch Truth Be Told? I hope they're angry. I hope they're angry about the issue of gun violence. I hope they're angry about the way that people manipulate the truth. Um, I hope they have compassion for both characters. Both characters um, have crises that they're dealing with. Um, they're both mothers, and that is central to who they are as individuals. Um, and I hope that they come away with respect and compassion for those two characters. I hope they have compassion for the dead, the people who are taken in the play, you know, or that we hear about in the play. But I also hope they have compassion for the, for the young man who committed the shooting. Um, not that I think we should celebrate him or celebrate people like that in any way whatsoever, but I also think it's important that we understand that these individuals come from, a, come from somewhere and have, have many of the same issues that we have. And if we don't try and understand what those issues are, if we don't try and understand the sadness and the rage that exists within them, then we're not going to solve this problem. We're not going to make things better. Um, I've done a lot of reading about, about Columbine. I've read Sue, Sue Klebold's book, which is a magnificent book. Um, and she's a very brave woman. Um, and she talks about raising her son. And I've learned a lot about what that experience was like raising Dylan Klebold and how how much she loved him, and one of the things that she says over and over again is love isn't enough. Simply to love your child isn't enough. You need to really uh, get down and get to know them and spend time with them and figure out who they are and do what you can to, to nurture them the best way you can through that period. And I've been through that with my son, and it's a difficult, you know, uh, difficult process, but it's, 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 it's important, it's an important process. Um, and so I hope people come away with understanding, not necessarily why the boy did what he did, but why the boy was in pain mm. and why he needed to act out and um, an understanding that we need to take that sort of thing seriously. We need to look at people like that and reach out to them and show them compassion. Well, we're blessed that you 
have honored us and have allowed us to work on Truth Be Told. Um, we are uh, having a great time in the rehearsal room, uh, digging into these rich, fascinating, witty characters. Um, and we're excited for you when you come back for opening night, right? Right, I'll be back here. I'll be here for opening night. Yes. Um, so, but before you go, we All want right. to ask you some very quick questions with super short answers. Great. Bill, what's your favorite play? In Summer Night's Dream. I'm, I'm old fashioned. In Summer Night's Dream, I love that play. Uh, who, what faces are on your Mount Rushmore of playwrights? Oh man, I've been dreading this question. Um, well, I have a recent playwright crush on Paul Vogel, having seen, um, and now I'm going to make an idiot of myself because I'm too indecent on Broadway. I just thought that was one of the most magnificent pieces of theater I've ever seen. Um, there's always Shakespeare, of course, but that's the most cheating to put him on there. Um, I love Tennessee Williams. Um, I could I could name any any other thousands of playwrights from from Rogers and Amstein to Neil Simon to to, to to Arthur Miller to Edward Albee to to Lorraine Hansberry. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm not. I'm not. A.R. Gurney. I love. I love A.R. Gurney's plays. You can have as many people on. Uh, okay, it's my. It's my mountain. You know? right. Yeah. Come right. on. <laughs> um, uh, what's your favorite thing about theater? People. Collaboration. Uh, I've, I've been in Denver for two days, and I'm feel like I've made friends for life. Oh, nice. Uh, what's one thing you wish you could change about theater in America today? I wish there were more of it. I wish there were more theater, and I wish it were more accessible to everybody. Um, you know, the prices for tickets uh, can get outrageous, and I think everybody needs theater, and I think we need to find ways to, to, to make that happen. Uh, what's your favorite beverage to drink when you're writing? <laughs> um, I'm a Diet Dr. Pepper man. I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed to say it. I don't put it out there. <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite thing about Denver? Well, I've only been here two days, and I've never spent any time in Denver before this, so I don't have I don't have a whole lot. I did go out to lunch with my with my nephew, and he did drive me around, and, and I went through some beautiful neighborhoods. But I, I will say this: everybody's been so nice to me. Everybody's been so pleasant to me. I mean, everywhere I go, the restaurants, the stores. I went to the the deli. What's the name of the deli? Eleven Deli. Eleven Deli, right down the street. Eleven Deli, right down the street yesterday, and bought a sandwich, and they brought me my sandwich, and I had talked to the to the young woman behind the bar for a little while. And as I was leaving, I walked out the door, and she came chasing after me, and she goes, "Your bag looks a little empty." She goes, "Here's a brownie for you." And she put a brownie in the bag. And that was just one example of how people have been so friendly and so kind to me since I've gotten gotten here. I mean, of course, the people at, at that Curious Theater Company, but everybody that I've encountered, it's just been a real joy and a real